Greeting from France. Seal alert. Thank you, Mr. Hugo, for your kind invitation to speak to this uh, noble gathering. It is an honor to be able to support your efforts to end the disturbing plight of the Namibian seals. To you, Mrs. Hugo, also, we thank you. Because we know that behind every great man there stands a great woman. And I value your dedication to the seals' protection alongside with your husband and other good-hearted volunteers. I truly appreciate the journalists and activists who are in attendance here today. You all play crucial roles in bringing about the evolution of society in so many dimensions. Even the most powerful government leaders need to partner with journalists and activists to get support to make positive changes in order to benefit the world and our planet and all beings on this beautiful planet. Your efforts are also of utmost importance in helping governments realize that uh, policies need to be changed in some areas so that they support the highest ideals of society. This is the situation uh, we face right now in Namibia. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may be aware, Namibia gets her name from the Nama Damara word, Namib, which means shield. Because the Namib Desert protected the country in a variety of ways. Through today's event and the subsequent understandings and undertakings that will prevent any and all seal slaughters on African shores in the future. It is my fervent prayer that the Namib can again live up to her name, a shield that protects innocent creatures, dignifies the land, and protects the deep humanity and nobility of Namibia and indeed of the whole continent of Africa. Furthermore, Namibia and the Cape Fur Seals, which glorify her shores, share an empathetic parallel. The Namibian nation gained her independence through a process of transition which took 11 months only, the same length of time as the seal's gestation period. Just as the country has taken prosperous strides since its birth, how beautiful and fitting it will be for the newborn seals to take part in this shared freedom and ever-expanding harmony. We are here today because more seals were brutally murdered in Namibia than any other place in the world last year. Around 86,000 endangered baby cave fur seals were clubbed to death to make seal skin coats and other products, while 6,000 adult males were shot at close range to create a product mistakenly believed to improve men's virility. We ask for your help to make sure these atrocities never happen again. Please do help. Animals are one of the building blocks of our world evolution and progress. When animals come down to earth, they are here for a specific purpose 
and they help humankind tremendously. Seals are among the most noble and most loving beings within the animal kingdom. They have an LQ, or loving quality, of 300%. Many of us humans don't even match up to that. Loving quality is an unconditional love that is beyond the love of a husband and a wife. Whales and cows also have a 300% loving quality, while the highest level of LQ on the planet among humans is only 90%. Up to date, huh? Of course, we can develop more and more every day to make our LQ even higher and more significant. This is one of the reasons why it is so important for us to protect the seals and to make sure they continue to exist on the planet. On Supreme Master Television, we interview Dr. Rima Morel, a Scottish telepathic communicator and founder of the Living Ark Century. She delivered a message from the seals in which they said it was very important that they remain alive because they are needed on our planet. They represent a very powerful kind of love, like that between a mother and a child. Where they live and where they swim, they are bringing this band of love back to the earth to help keep the earth balanced. The kefir seals are an endangered species even. And if they become extinct, it will not be good for us on Earth. It is like this with the all animal species because each of them have their own unique purpose. They all provide important energies to help keep the Earth balanced. This is one of the reasons why it is so important for us to protect them, respect them, and value them. So please, Help all of you and more people on this planet. Help as much as you can to safeguard our biodiversity, to ensure a happy, healthy existence for us and for our future generations. Seals are very playful and curious and loving, but they are also very noble and intelligent. Uh, for example, in the U.S., a rescue harbor seal actually taught himself to talk, talk the human language. A man in Maine was out on a walk in uh, 1971 when he discovered an orphan harbor seal pup and named him Hoover. When Hoover was about seven years old, he suddenly began talking like an adult male human with a New England accent. Isn't that amazing? (laughs) We are, as humans, cannot even speak his language. And this seal, he taught himself with a regional accent. Uh, If you go onto YouTube, you can find some recordings of him laughing like a human and saying very clearly, hey, come over here. Seals have also been known to come to the aid of those in need. About 10 years ago, a seal in the United Kingdom rescued a dog who was drowning. The dog had fallen into the river Tees and was swept away by very strong current. People on the shore reported that uh, when the dog began losing strength, a seal suddenly appeared and began to use her nose to gently push the dog to the shore. The Namibian government's commitment to their nation and their people is an honorable one. Around 55% of their population lives on less than US $2 per day and they are doing their best to bring prosperity to their people. Their efforts have been hindered because the land is an arid 
desert, and only one percent of it is arable and suitable for agriculture. The Namibian government has supported a reduced size of the seal colony because they believe the seals threaten the fishing industry, which is the cornerstone of their economy. However, South Africa faced a similar situation in uh, the 1980s and 1990s. Politicians and fishermen jointly called for a call of Cape fur seals because they also thought the seals were threatening the fishing industry. They ended up dropping their request in 1993 after scientists concluded that the killing of seals might create bigger problems over the long term by putting the ecosystem out of balance and thus reducing fish populations to an even greater extent. Even though South Africa averted seal slaughter based on scientific evidence of the seal's effect on fish populations, we should be protecting seals based on the higher noble ideal that no one has the right to harm them to protect business interests or for any other reason. The Namibian government's dedication to improve the well-being of their people is a very understandable one. However, through research and learning uh, the experiences of other countries, alternatives can always be found that do not involve the death of innocent beings. The killing of seals or even whales that some people feel are taking away food from humans is not the solution to this problem. The animal kingdom knows how to take care of themselves. If there are so many, uh, there are too many fish or too many seals, they will take care of it. They know how, in order to keep their natural balance. God knows how. We should not forget God. It is we humans who are destroying this balance. A seal coal can have both near and long-term detrimental effects. One of the effects uh, is the unpredictable and sometimes irreversible disruption that can occur when just uh, one species is removed from its ecosystem. Namibia has had first-hand experience of this. When international fishing fleets in the 1970s nearly wiped out sardines, leading to the creation of an oxygen-depleted oceanic dead zone without sardines around to eat the Phytoplankton, they bloomed and then die off. When the algae die, they sank to the bottom of the ocean and decomposed. Hydrogen sulfide, which is a deadly toxic gas at uh, high levels, and methane, which is a strong greenhouse gas, were released from that. Sadly, many fish die of suffocation because Hydrogen sulfide pulls oxygen out of the water. And villagers also had to live with the putrid smell that filled the air in the whole region. Over the past few decades, many governments have responded to similar declines in fish populations by setting quota limits on the number of fish that can be taken out of the ocean each year. Although this quota system is referred to as sustainable fish management practices, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization now states that there is no guarantee fishing can be done sustainably over the long run. They have found that even under the best 
manage quota system, some fish populations have continued to collapse and been unable to recover. This is a frightening scenario, especially when we consider that the collapse of just one fish species, the sardine, in Namibia led to an oceanic death zone, toxic gas, and the deaths of many fish who became asphyxiated by the lack of oxygen. If fish are continually taken from the ocean, it will become as empty as the desert. In 2006, An international team of scientists and economists found that around a third of the ocean's fish populations has already been wiped out due to fishing, pollution, and other human causes. They warned that if the steep decline of fish population was not stopped, the oceans would be empty of fish by 2048. It's not far, it's not far future for us. Our own survival is at risk if we continue consuming fish because the oceans produce half of the world's oxygen and fish are an important part of the marine ecosystem which produces oxygen for us. The fishing industry is not the only unsustainable pillar of the Namibian economy. Although livestock grazing has been an aspect of the Southern African culture for a very long time, the ranches, which take up 85% of Namibia's arable land, are now suffering from land degradation. Vast areas of land that have been used by Normandic peoples for thousands of years have become deteriorated due to more intensive grazing of cattle and other ruminant animals. Over the past 60 years, the pastures supporting the livestock industry have gone from supporting 3.7 million cattle and 5.7 7 million small ruminant animals, but now only support about 2 million cattle and 4 million small ruminants. The most efficient way to grow nutrition is to stop using animal products and to embrace a plant-based diet. To create a given amount of nutrition, meat and dairy required more water and land and other energies contribute more to land degradation, desertification, and energy insufficiency. Also deforestation, biodiversity loss, and climate change. And of course, from that, disasters. If we want to survive, we must move away from the culture of death to the culture of life. We should live together with all animals in love and harmony. This is the only way to have peace on earth and to protect our survival, as well as the survival of all on the planet. May God bless us so that this aspiration, dream, come true. One of the most exciting Agriculture solutions to desert regions like Namibia is the concept of a permaculture forest garden. A successful demonstration garden was created in Jordan in 2000 by Geoff Lawton of the Permaculture Research Institute of Australia. Jordan is one of the 15th driest countries on the planet and The Jordan River Valley, where the project was implemented, receives only 100 to 150 millimeters of rainfall in about three rains per year. They successfully turn a flat 10-acre plot of land into a lush forest garden. When they started, 
the soil was as fine as dust, overgrazed, overworked, and highly saline. By digging a system of mounds and swells or ditches, they were able to create a system which captured one million liters of water during each rain. Once the water was in the swells, it was allowed to sink into the soil below the garden for use throughout the long dry season. The system also removed the salt from the soil and rebuilt topsoil. Good news. I think all the dry country should follow this example and take care of their people in a better way and more successful, more guaranteed successful way. We have been discussing the structural causes of why the seal slaughter is occurring and why the Namibian government needs to lead its citizens away from animal agriculture and towards a more sustainable and healthier future based on vegan foods or plant-based foods. These will lead Namibians to a new country of wild abundance and blessing. While these are the long-term solutions to bring Namibia to food security, abundance and prosperity and health, in the short term, the seal code needs to stop immediately. And please, stop it now. I want to express my most sincere gratitude again to Seal Alert SA for organizing this media event. We were asked to attend this meeting to raise awareness of the harvesting of Namibian seals. But I wouldn't use the word harvest because it's too positive for such a cruel, destructive action. I would say stop the slaughtering, stop the murdering, stop the massacring of innocent baby seals. Stop now, stop forever. We are human. We have compassion and loving kindness within our heart. We love our family members. We love our children. Imagine if it's our babies who will be clubbed to death in the poor blood this way without an inch of any defense whatsoever. Totally helpless and in agony. Please, all of you, Think about this picture. Picture it in your mind. Picture of the helpless babies laying in pain, in blood, withering in agony, without anyone to rescue them, without anyone pitying them, just so that someone can decorate their body with it, with their seal fur, with their skin. Please imagine if these are human babies. Would you do something about it in your power and do it now to help rescue these innocent, helpless babies? I pray that heaven strengthen your faith in mercifulness and in your own power of divinity and love. And uh, I also want to offer my sincere gratitude to the Namibia government and all organizations and all other countries' governments for any of your actions that help save the seals, the wells, and all other animals on the planet. Because by doing that, you are also saving precious human lives. May God bless you all. Thank you again and again. Thank you for all of your presence today and your supportive spirit and for all your future effort 
to save all, including human, through your benevolent action. Be veg, go green, do good. Amen. God is great, Buddha be praised. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. Bless Namibia. Bless the seals. Bless the humans. Bless all on this planet to live forever in peace, love, harmony, prosperity, abundance, and health.